Right, I'm just going to start off by just taking you through this little book um, just quickly. I managed to lose my um, butterfly off the bottom there. I'm sure it'll turn up at some point. Uh, but this is the book that we're going to make. It's not huge. It's a little almost gatefold book. Um, it opens out. We've got a pocket on the left hand uh, inside cover with a little um, photo mat in there. I should have just realised I haven't printed out my photos. That's not very clever, is it? Uh, and then on this side, um, we've got our hinged pages. Very easy to put together. This is a very, very, very simple little book. Um, but I've just used one pack of um, six by six papers, which are, are these conservatories uh, by um, Recollections. Um, it is a really, really, really nice. Oh, I'll just open it up. Pack of papers. But what's nice about it is that, as you can see, it's got lots of little bits on it. So it's got these little cutter parts here. It's got the plain papers, which are perfect as backing papers for our pages. Uh, it's got these stripy bits, more backing papers. Some more cutter parts with bits that we can cut out, like the tag shape or that shape there. Ooh, a little bit of foiling. Oh, God, I have some bling. Um butterflies all sorts of bits that we can just cut out and use for our our, um, our little book so one pack of paper if you choose your papers right with all these little extra bits in it um makes that whole book so we're going to get started uh what we're going to do first is actually make the um the back of the book the actual covers so what i need you to do is to get your thin chip board uh, and your Tyvek um, at this point. So the, the um, chipboard that I've used is so thin I can actually uh, easily cut it with my trimmer, um, which is what I'm going to do. So first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to cut our uh, cover um, from the chipboard and I want you to cut. So we're cutting pieces that are four and a half inches wide. So I'm just going to cut that first so that I've got a piece of chipboard here now that is four and a half inches wide. And out of that, I want to cut two pieces at three and a half inches. So that's three and a half by four and a half inches. And I want two of those. And then I want three pieces which are one inch by four and a half. So I'm just going to cut those. One. two, three. Okay, I'm going to put the rest of the chipboard to one side. So what I've got now are two pieces of chipboard that are three and a half by four and a half inches and I've got these three smaller pieces of chipboard which are four and a half by one inch and I'm just going to put those to one side for a moment because what I'm going to do now is cut my Tyvek. Now People often ask about Tyvek and what it is and what's special about it. Um, if you are in America, I understand that you can just go into um, a post office and pick up your um, some um, envelopes from your, your local post offices because they're made of Tyvek. Um, but over here uh, in the UK, um, it's easiest, I think, to buy it in A4 sheets. Now, it's used a lot um, in house building. Uh, it's Mark will explain it, but it's some sort of hi Carol. I've just realised I'm not looking at the messages here. I apologise profusely. Hi Hannah, um, hi Linda. Um, it's a it's a breathable membrane that goes um, on the outside. Yeah, on what? Sorry, a vapor barrier. Oh, a vapor barrier. That sounds very posh. Um, that goes on the outside of houses. But what's particularly good about it is that um, it looks like paper, feels like paper, folds like paper, but unlike paper, you can't tear it. So that's me trying to tear it and that doesn't work. 
because it's not designed to tear which is great because that means that we can use it on the spine of our books which will help to stop the paper from cracking any paper that we put over any design paper um, and it will also mean that our uh, spines are strengthened so that we can open and close books all the time and it's not going to hurt them so that's why I like to use Tyvek so um, with this piece of Tyvek here I want you to cut two pieces at three by four and a half inches so I'm just gonna see you can use a trimmer to cut it and you can use scissors but it's not going to tear so two pieces at three by four and a half inches okay so you don't need a lot of Tyvek really now what I want you to do next is I want you to get two of these thinner pieces the ones that are one inch by four and a half inches and we're just going to use some wet glue I've lost all my little bottles I've no idea where they are so I'm gonna to have to use it straight out of the, the bottle tonight I want you to put some wet glue you can use double-sided tape I don't oh crikey I don't tend to um, because I don't think it holds you want your books to last and I worry that they're not going to hold for any good length of time so I've just glued that piece there into the middle of that piece of Tyvek and I'm going to do exactly the same again over here okay right now I'm just going to get my um oh cutting mat because I find this really really helpful when I come to put books together to make sure that they're straight so I've got my cutting mat here and I'm going to just put some glue on that bit of Tyvek there but I'm going to make sure that that is straight on the bottom of that line can you see that line down there and then I'm going to line up this bit of my book so that it's straight all the way down there now as you can see I'm leaving a bit of a gap about an eighth of an inch between this bit the spine and between this bit of the book this is going to be my front cover okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue on that bit of Tyvek over there and I'm going to add the back cover which is that bit and I'm going to make sure that it lines up straight with about an eighth of an inch gap okay then I'm going to just put some glue on that bit of Tyvek there I'm going to slip that underneath that bit, line it up so the bottom of my book is straight and glue that down. I'm going to get my final piece of chipboard, a bit of glue on that final piece of, chip, of uh, Tyvek and I'm going to glue that onto there like that. So you can see my bits of chipboard are straight along that bottom line down there. Hopefully that means they're straight along the top as well, but you never know. And we've got everything lined up with our gaps in between there. Okay? Right. Okay, we can put that away now. So basically when we fold our book up that's what it's going to be like which as you can see is the way that that book folds there okay so turn it over and what we're going to do now is we're going to get some double-sided tape and we're going to attach our pattern paper cover so I'm going to put some strips of double-sided tape all the way along here but I am going to miss out where those gaps are I can feel with my finger where they are but I don't want to put glue on there because for me that's a sure way to get your paper to crack so I'm just going to do my strips of oh, double-sided tape just work out where that gap is and it's there put my tape down this doesn't have to be pretty or perfect at all 
it's just going to hold our pattern paper in place right so just feeling where those gaps are I'm just going to put one there there one right at the end one in the middle there right oh cat hairs okay so what I'm going to do now is just take off the back of this double sided paper that tape even Hi Rizwana, how are you? I gotta say I loved your card uh, on on the Fiskers page this week with the um the baubles. It was really clever and how you showed about how you can make some for your Christmas tree. I really, really like that. So if anybody wants to go and have a look, if you look at Fiskerettes UK um facebook page um rizwana and i are both working on there at the moment um we're on the team for four months which is very exciting um but rizwana's card this week was just so gorgeous i mean they're always gorgeous but i just i just really love this one right actually that was last week's wasn't it because this week was the robin okay so this is what i'm going to use for my cover this piece of paper here okay it's uh, just six by 12 inches it's no big deal no fancy sizing and what i'm going to do is i am going to lay my cover down on there just like that with obviously the sticky side that we've just done down i'm just going to trim it off slightly Oh God, I don't know if you can hear that, but that is Storm. I don't know what she's rabbiting about. She oh, she's brought me a toy. That's very kind of her. Yeah. What have you got? I'm sure she'll come and say hello in a minute. Okay, so right, that's the cover put on. So what we're going to do now is we are going to mitre the corners. like that and we're going to fold these over now I like to try and train my paper to get it into the right the right position so I'll fold it before I stick it get my big bone folder and just make sure that I've got a really sharp crease there now I still like to use wet glue on here but I also like to put just a little bit of double-sided tape in place to hold the paper down whilst the glue dries so I'm just going to put a little bit of holding tape there and a little bit of wet glue and I'm going to fold that over and fold that into place I'm going to do exactly the same at the other end I like to do the ends first I don't know why I just do no particular reason whatever works for you I'll just get my bone folder for the state of it it's absolutely filthy I'm going to clean it before the next class I don't know how it gets so dirty I'm just going to put my little piece of holding tape on
Yes, it is a big boner, Hannah. It's my big boner. <clears throat> Hi, Tracy. Okay. So that's both ends of the cover done. And now we're just going to fold over the side. So I'm going to do exactly the same with that. Just fold it up. Fold it down. Make sure that this is folded in a bit so that it's not sticking out where we don't want it to. Mel, late as always. Tut, tut. Oh, that's not my bone folder. I do sell them, Tracy. Oh, I think Mark's already on the ball there. Um, there is a slightly smaller one as well, um, which Hannah, I know, favours. I haven't tried a small one. I just like them big. But once you've once you've had one of these, you will never go back. Become a bit of a joke in some of the classes, actually, uh, about the big bone folders. Right. Now on to the final bit. Let's make sure Tracy there's... Said she's not saying anything to that. <laughs> no, but she don't. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a standing, a standing joke that actually I didn't start, I have to say. Uh, it was a lady called Anastasia in the group who started the jokes about the big boners. Oh, and Pat as well. Pat's mentioned it before now. That's all I'm saying. It's now become a bit of a thing. Right. Nearly there. Just going to put a little bit of holding tape on. Because I can. And some wet glue. No, I can't stop you from visitors. Oh, I see. Fine. Not me. That's Saturday. Oh, yes, yeah, this Saturday. Yes. Everybody say happy birthday to Mel because it's her birthday on Saturday. She's really, really old. Okay, right, so that's the cover covered. That's the, that'll be the front cover. And then this is the back. Actually, it'll be that way around. So I've done it upside down, not that it matters. Um, that'll be the front of the book, um, the back of the book. And then that's the, the outside cover. Right, okay. So uh, now what I want to do is I want to just cover these inside bits here. So I'm going to turn to my pattern paper. Uh, and I'm going to choose what I want to cover the inside with. I might do this slightly differently to last time. I don't know. I think I'm going to use... Oh, decisions, decisions. I like that one. Let's go for that one. So there's two sheets of each in here. So I know that these are four and a half by three and a half and those are one by four and a half. So I'm actually going to cut these at, actually this probably isn't a good idea for the middle of it. Um, I'm going 
gonna have to make sure that these all go the same way so I want to cut three at one inch because when I'm actually matting this normally I'd leave a bit of a gap around the outside which I will do but I want to mat right up to the edges of the chipboard so um, I am going to cut this one um, I'm going to cut two at oh crikey why do I do this Hannah help me here three and th three eighths three and three eighths of an inch oh heck three yeah that'll do is that right three and three eighths of an inch yeah that'll do so three and three eighths of an inch by four and a quarter inches yeah that looks good four and a quarter inches are you writing this down mark what was that last slide for, i don't know four and a though. four and a quarter it's near enough yeah, the yeah. Uh, so I'm going to just stick that on. If you want to ink the edges, absolutely do. But when I glue this on here, I'm going to centre it top to bottom. But as you can see, I'm actually going to put that right to the edge there. So when I do that, hopefully, oh no, I've cut that too short. Oh, what an idiot. That should have been three and, oh, crikey. That should have been three and a half by four and a quarter. That middle one. Three and a half by one. Four and a quarter. Yeah. So... should do the trick yeah okay so I'm just going to butt that up to the side I'm just going to do the same with that you'll never notice the line There we go. See? You'd never know. And then I'm going to cut these at two at one inch by four and a quarter. One inch. And then one at... four and a quarter by seven eighths of an inch don't throw any bits away until you've finished because you just never for know patching. when you might need them not for patching well yeah for patching okay so this is the one that's slightly smaller than an inch and that's just going to go on there like that and then these two going to fit there okay right there we go right so whilst that's drying 
just going to put it to one side and we're going to get on with actually making the cards now the background of the cards that i've used these these cards here and this one here i've just used plain white card you only need two sheets you don't need a great deal for this and i want you to cut six at three by four inches yeah One, two, three. No, oh, you're only going to need one piece of card. Okay, so those are our six pages. And basically they're going to fit in there like that. Okay. So what we want to do now is decorate them. So we're going to start off very easily and we're just going to choose um, some of the background papers out of our um, pattern papers. And we're going to make sure that we cut and Um, decorate front and back so there's three four five Okay, so now we're going to cut them. Now, I'm just going to cut one piece for each front and back. Um, but if you want to um, layer them up, you'll see some pictures in the tutorial, actually, um, of how I've done some of them. Let me show you. This is printed out back to front. Right, I don't know if you can see here. But some of them um, I've done with three, just for instance, three strips of paper. I've either done, covered the whole thing or I've just used scraps of paper just to, just to cover it. It just depends what you've got and what you want to use. So we know that each piece is three by four. So I am going to cut my... Um, backing papers I'm going to cut at three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths and just to show you that will mean that we've just got a little bit of a white edge around each of our pieces okay so that's front and back so that's one So I'm going to cut this at three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Okay, so that's number two. Four. 
four. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to glue these onto my backing card. So this bit's kind of boring if you're watching. So spend the time telling me about how you're getting on with all your Christmas decorations and things. How you getting on? I'm doing our house tomorrow. So far, I have cleaned and mopped underneath the sofa, and I found about twenty gazillion cat balls, cat toys. That's as far as I've got so far. So when we're done here, poor Mark's going to have to go up into the roof to get all of the Christmas decorations down. I'll post some pictures um, on my Cal Summers workshops page when I'm done. So if you want to go and have a look, by all means, feel free. I do tend to do it the same every year because, well, I like it. How many cats have you got, Tracy? Have we had this conversation already? Oh no, I think I had the conversation with Carol about her beautiful cats. Oops, it's not quite centred. Oh. I don't know where our cats are. They're being remarkably good these days. They used to just come and sit right in the middle of where I was working. They must know. Seven? Oh, wow! Oh, I'm so jealous. Mark, can I have some more? Yeah. We've only got four. It's not enough, is it? What about your prices, Carol? I'll tell you what's really surprised me about our cats is that um, we have a, a big Christmas tree in the front room um, and it's... it's it, it's got all sorts of 
well it's got like birds and stuff on it it's like um quite rustic and and um woodlandy woods it's like a proper tree um and i'm absolutely amazed at the cats i shouldn't say this because they'll do it now but they've never really been that bothered they've never been that interested in climbing it which does surprise me especially with storm yes we do need more cats i agree tracy four isn't enough although we've just redecorated our bedroom and it's this beautiful beautiful sort of breton dark blue color and we've got bedding to match and there uh, yeah all i can That's tell you it, yeah well it, it's not cat fur compatible because we've got two blue so like dark gray which shows up like you wouldn't believe one ginger and one light gray one. Oh um, my god carol's got three. oh no you need more cats carol you've got to have more cats I've seen pictures of Carol's cats. They are absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Ooh. Right. Okay, so that's all of the base pages done. So what I want to do now is um, make holes in. I'm going to make sure they're all the right way up. No. Before I start doing that stuff. Okay, now, little tip for you. Our cats are cuddly looking. Our cats are cuddly looking. Yeah, they might look cuddly, but they don't like being cuddled. We have scratches. Yeah, we have scratches to prove it. Uh, how wide was this? Four and a half, wasn't it? Yeah, four and a half. So I've got a piece of chipboard left over. Oh, <laughs> that's exactly... No, it's not four and a half. It's three and a half wide. I'm just going to cut that down so that this is the same <coughs> width. Is that bit there okay and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure to find out where I want to make my holes so I think about half an inch down is good and then I did write this on the um, on the tutorial because I spent ages measuring it this morning. Three quarters and two and a quarter, but that was on this one. Yeah. So oh, that's not going to help, is it? Oh, I know what I'll do. Let's cut that to three. All right. So I'm going to cut this the same width as that. So that's three. Yeah, so that's half an inch down and I'm going to measure this at three quarters of an inch and two and a quarter inches. So I've got these two marks here. You can see those? And that'll tell me exactly where I want to make my holes. Now, you can use an ordinary hole punch because at the end of the day, this isn't um, super thick chipboard. Or you can use your cropper dial. So I'm just going to make my test holes. In my guide okay so this is my guide of where i'm going to put my holes so now if i line that up there with the top of my page i can easily well i say i can easily see if i take my glasses off i can probably easily see 
where I want to punch my hole. Oh, super. I need a pokey thing. Okay, so you can see I've used that as my guide, so now I've managed to punch my holes, okay? And I'm going to do that on all of them. I'm going to try two at a time. I hope I don't live to regret this. Pick a tool. They're great, aren't they? Oh, well, now this is the perfect excuse. Okay, so I oh, did two. One's upside down. Never mind, I'll hide it. Are you using the smaller of the two things? No, nope, I'm using the wide one. The bigger one. And I've set it. I've set this bit to half an inch so I know it's exactly in the right place. Okay, last one. Okay, so they're all done. But while I'm here, I'm going to work out where the middle of this bit is. So this is the top of my gatefold folder uh, cover. And I'm just going to, hang on, poke a tool out again. And I'm going to punch that hole there. And on the other side okay so those holes for the ring the ring bits are in okay so the guide I think is really useful I think it makes life a lot simpler personally it's a little jig it is a little jig you can do a little jig when you're done as well so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the hole that goes here for our twine so we know that that's an inch across so um and we know that this is four and a half down and we know that two and a quarter is half the four and a half. So I'm just going to mark that there. And I know that half an inch is going to be exactly halfway across. So I've made um, a mark at two and a quarter inches down from the top and half an inch down um, from there so that this is going to be in the middle of my so I'm just going to position my cropper dial with that little hole right in the middle there there we go okay now I think this is dry enough so what we're going to do now is we're going to fold this book up so that it's the right shape okay so I've got my gaps here which is going to make it nice and easy so I'm just going to carefully, 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 because we don't want anything to rip, just coax that into place. OK. And I'm going to do the same with that one. Now, it's going to take a little while for this book to kind of settle itself into the right position. So don't worry if it keeps coming open. And we're going to do the same with that side. And we're going to do the same with that side okay so there we go there's my cover all done all right and then there's the hole for the twine now we're going to work on the um the pages but just to make sure that we keep them all together and don't lose them we're going to put them into the book ready i say that except i've lost my hinges and the bits and here we go 
So. I'm just going to pop that in there. How long would you normally leave it to dry? Well, on a book this side, you don't need to leave it very long. It's perfectly fine now, as you can um, as you can see. If it was a bigger book, I'd say leave it overnight. I'm actually going to leave that one out because we'll do that one first. Okay, let's just pop that in there. So that is pretty much the book. And now we're just going to decorate up the pages so it's nice and easy to go together. What I've done on this bit of the page here is I've actually made a little pocket um, and I've made a little pocket on one of my pages inside here. So before we go any further, I think what we'll do is we'll make that pocket to go on that page there. So choose some of your pattern paper. It doesn't matter. Whatever piece um, you like. So Hi Sadie. Uh, just gonna just double check what size it is. Who knows? What we're making? Then? We're gonna make a. We're, we're gonna do the inside cover pocket. Have you got the instructions? I've got them on it. Uh, You're very organised. Four and a half by two and a half on the pattern paper. Yeah. All right, so, of course, it's on the one page I haven't got. Okay, so we're going to make... this little pocket here that that slips into. Okay? So, Mark's just told me that I've got to cut it what size? Four and a half, two and a half. Four and a half by two and a half inches. So let me just choose some more pattern paper. How wide's that? Actually, that would do just fine. It doesn't matter about that bit at the bottom because we're going to um, cover it up. Now, you need to get your scoreboard. And uh, yeah. I want you to score at half an inch on the two and a half inch side and I want you to score at half an inch and at four inches on the four and a half inch side okay so that pocket is going to fit there exactly okay so you can put that to one side get your scissors and I want you to mitre this corner. So I want you to just snip up to where those um, score lines intersect. And if you just... oh, All right, see you soon, Carol. If you just cut it a bit of an angle there, it just, I think, makes it all lie just a little bit flatter. Okay, so I've just mitered those corners and now I'm just going to fold that in. Now I'm going to glue that in place and it should fit absolutely exactly, which it does miraculously. So I'm just going to put some wet glue on the flaps here. I'm going to just make sure I miss that little hole on there because I really don't want it to stick to my backing paper. And I'm just going to pop that on there like that. Okay, really, really, really simple little pocket there. Okay. Right, let's put that to one side. So, let's see how I decorated 
that page which is this one okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose bits out of my pattern papers that cut out nicely now you can see here I've used a bit of that page I've used some of the stripes I've lost my stays on ink it's around somewhere so what I did do which I'll show you but I'm not going to do tonight because I can't is I've got a piece of acetate here and um, I've chosen just some flowery and butterfly stamps that I like that kind of went with the um, papers that I was using and I have used my stays on ink to stamp directly onto the acetate I don't know if you can see that then when that was dry I've simply cut round it and just used it glued it on just as a bit of extra interest and I've glued it on with um, glossy accents which I'm sure everybody knows because that seems to stick it quite well but as I can't find my stays on ink I'm not going to be doing that tonight um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out some of these bits here and layer them up now um, what I have done is I've cut out these little um, Polaroid frames. You can just cut them yourself out of cardstock. These each measure two and one eighth of an inch by one and three quarter inches. And then I've just cut a square out in the middle. Now, I've done this on my scan and cut um, and it was a file that I very quickly put together, just an SVG file. Um, there's these small ones and there's also um, a larger version as well. I mean, they're dead simple to do. They're just rectangles and squares. However, if you do want my SVG file, which will work in a scan and cut, you should be able to um, upload it into Cricut Design Space or... Um, any other any other cutting thing I would reckon an SVG file yes am I right Mark yes wonderful yep yeah. um, drop me a line and I'll send it to you um, and then it'll save you the bother of having to cut out all of these little squares in the middle which is just a pain in the butt quite frankly um, but I'm quite happy to pass um, the, that, that on to uh, the people but it's, they're so easy to put together literally it's just a rectangle with a square in it it's not it's not rocket science, but if you don't um, have the time to do that yourself, then by all means, drop me a line and I will send you my file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find my scissors, which I had two seconds ago and like a true crafter, I've lost. And I'm going to cut out. Now, when I cut out, or, as I know my American friends like to say, fussy cut. I don't do it overly carefully. I like to leave just a little bit of a gap around the outside because I think if you're too careful... We've got Mel commenting. Mel's commenting, oh dear. She's helping. She's helping? Well, that would be novel. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, I don't cut out right to the edges because you know who's got time for that quite frankly. It's a design feature and I don't I don't like to be too particular. I haven't got my glasses on, what's Mel commenting? Uh, she says the acetate looks really effective and expensive as an embellishment. It does, and it's so easy to do. And I have to say, thanks to Kerry Gibson for getting me interested in stamping. Stamping's one thing that I've never really gotten into. Um and uh, I don't know why, really. I think it's because I've never been a card maker. But when I saw Kerry's book that she made, the two-fold folio that she'd stamped on for the Thirsty Brush Company um, and used all of their beautiful, beautiful stamps. There is a link, actually, on Kerry's um, post in the, in the group to the Thirsty Brush Company, if you want to take a look. Um, she just inspired me. I just, oh, gosh. I just thought I need to learn to stamp more than I more than I do. So that was kind of what got me thinking. Um, but uh, yeah, Kerry's work is just so beautiful and the Thirsty Brush stamps are absolutely gorgeous. And like I said, there is a link on Kerry's post in the group to um, to the um, to the stamps that she's used. 
and I would thoroughly recommend you go and take a look because they are absolutely stunning. Mel says cheeky monkey. Cheeky monkey, why? What have I done? Well, I don't know. Stuff. Stuff you. Yeah. Right. Now, I don't know whether or not you are actually going to want to just sit and watch me fussy cut and decorate up all of these pages. In the written tutorial, which is now in the group, I have taken photographs of each of the pages so that you can see how I've layered them up uh, and what they what the final thing looks like. Um, I know in the group these um, ladies uh, are there for you to download and um, use yourself. If you want me to email those so that there's no quality lost, because I know um, when you put things up on Facebook, we do lose quite a lot of quality of pictures. Um, just drop me a line with your email address and I will happily email those over to you. Um, but I doubt very, very much that you're going to want to sit and watch me just fussy cut and do all of these pages separately. So... Right. When you are um, putting your uh, stuff together, do bear in mind um, that you don't want to be covering up your holes. I think I must have cut that round like that. Let's just cut that off because that's going to be too wide. But just play with your papers, play with the designs that you've got just to make up your pages. What I do quite often is I layer up my um, my pages. So if you see on here where I've actually put the sentiment, you can see I hope that it stands up slightly off the page. And what I've done is I've used odd bits of this um, chipboard. You can use foam pads, obviously, but I don't like them. They're squishy. Uh, so I tend to put things onto um, chipboard when I stick them on but if you choose your pattern papers carefully there is so much option for you to cut out bits and layer bits up and I just think if you've got lots of you know like six inch pads which I have because I just really really like them and then I never know what to do with them this is you know a perfect a perfect way to use them up just got a few photos you can just add them in you know if it's just a, a weekend away or a day trip this might be the perfect way for you to display your photos so I'll just finish this one page with you and then I'm going to leave you to get on with your books yourself now i did mention in the group today with a bit of a sneak peek that we have got a very very big project coming up um next year which uh i should be able to show you at the weekend and i'll i'll do a film about that and upload it but other than that i would say this is the last class that we're going to do together in 2019 um, however, over uh, after Christmas, I think what I'll do is I'm going to pop up um, a little tiny book that you might enjoy making, uh, which I will show you in a minute. Um, and I'll just make the video for that and I'll just pop it up for you to work on at your own pace. Right. OK.
So as you can see, this is all you need to do just to layer up um, your pattern papers. I'll pop a photo in there in a bit, but really it's as simple as that. So you're just going to use your pattern papers. Just build up each page as you go. There are full um, examples in the tutorial and I'll also put them up onto um, the the Paper Scissors story group so that you can see each page separately and how I've layered them up. Uh, but it is a nice, quick and easy project. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys all do with it. Uh, and if you hold on two ticks, I will show you the little book that um, I'm going to put up oops, um, in the group for you to do over Christmas because, you know, I don't want you to miss me too much. So uh, this version, I have used Graphic 45 Sunkiss papers. Um, there is a belly band that holds our little book together, which I'm just going to take off. OK. And then we've got this little book here that opens up with space for photos, little tags. There. I'll put some pictures up in the group, but that's um, that's just a little extra that I'll put up in the group sometime over Christmas so that you don't all forget how to make mini books. OK, so it's just a just a very tiny little book. Um, very easy and quick to put together a bit like this one, but quicker, actually. OK, so all that remains for me now is to say thank you very, very much, everybody, for joining me in 2019. I can't wait to see everything that we're going to do together uh, in 2020. I have got loads and loads of ideas. Um, we're going to be looking at Traveller's Notebooks and signatures. We're going to be looking at some little tiny mini books. We're going to be looking at some big projects, one of which, as I said, uh, is this organiser, which is the first one that we'll be doing in 2020. There is a big mini book um, for which I have used the Magic of Oz papers by Graphic 45. Um, there are some lovely papers by Jen, somebody, can't remember, for um i think it's echo park uh, that have just recently come out the beautiful greens and teals and whites that we will be using um for a small sort of fold away book um so lots and lots of ideas of things that we're going to do next year so uh that's it for me for this evening um i hope you've enjoyed making this little book can't wait to see what you guys all do with it and uh happy christmas everybody i will see you all very very soon Bye-bye.